George Osborne has delivered his fourth budget. In a bid to reignite the UK economy, he's made tax cuts, set up mortgage schemes, but also changed the remit of the Bank of England. But will it do any good? To discuss his chances of success, I'm joined by Martin Wolfe, Chief Economics Commentator. Martin, we've had quite a few disagreements about what George Osborne should do, but why don't you first uh, tell us what he has done? Well, if I look at the budget overall, I don't expect it to have any significant effect on the economy. Uh, the basic um, envelope, uh, policy strategy of the government has been completely clear since the very first budget. The subsequent ones have just sort of rolled this out. The economic performance continues to disappoint. Again, uh, we are talking about just 0.6% growth this year and a very weak recovery next year, all of which seems to me depressingly plausible. Uh, the, the consequence of the crisis seems uh, longer lasting and more depressing every year. This budget will not change any of that. It seems to me, however, it's politically quite shrewd. Uh, and that's what I would expect at this stage, since he doesn't really have that much to offer. He's hitting two targets which are very important for the Conservatives. Uh, he's the, well, the aspirant, aspirational middle classes, and I think the, uh, particularly the housing proposal, the proposal to support uh, people to buy houses, which seems to be exactly the wrong thing to do in a collapsing housing market in the long run, which is what I think it will be. But he's done that. He's dealt with fuel. And then, of course, he's done tax cuts for business. So I expect the CBI to cheer, uh, the Institute of Directors to cheer, and, and a lot of conservative uh, backbenchers to cheer. But economically, it seems to me very little. Finally, on the remit of the Bank of England, I think he's, what he's done is the, the very least, as far as I can see, to change things that one could imagine. Let's come to, back to the remit in a second, but I think if you look at the figures on the tax changes, you're absolutely right. The tax rises in one area are cancelled by tax cuts in another area. So we see with the single-tier pension, we see associated very large increases in employer national insurance contributions for some workers, and then he's cut employer national insurance for in other areas for small companies. I mean, we are seeing though, I mean, so if we say that the actual measures don't change anything, we are seeing, what would you, what would you like to see in this, uh, in this budget? Well, um, obviously, I would have liked to have seen a, a, uh, a change in strategy in one fundamental way. I would have seen, I, I'm actually welcome the fact that he is putting a little bit more money into infrastructure investment. But how much more should he I, uh, My view is that they should have been much bolder at this stage after this long period of disappointment and been prepared to have a program which amounted to 3 or 4 percent of GDP over two years. So we're talking about so 60 billion quid uh, over two 50 years. 50 billion or so. So that's uh, a lot of money. So I would have liked to have convinced business this economy is going to grow again. What worries me very much, as you know, is that as we've got used to not growing, businesses investment is built around increasingly around that assumption and we're not getting anything out of it. Of course there is the big issue and his great success uh, as it were is that we've got a we've got a growing employment in a stagnant economy and that has persuaded many people that actually none of this would make any difference to to uh, demand though I would still say infrastructure helps so, supply. See, I mean you make the point that it's nearly all just a demand problem but do, do, does that mean you think the OBR has just got it fundamentally wrong because it assumes it's a supply problem. All of its uh, increase in borrowing, it's projecting over the years ahead, nearly all of that, it says is structural. It's because actually this growth has gone for good and we couldn't have got it back and demand wouldn't help. What do you, what do you make of the well, OBR's the simple, assessment? The simple truth is we do not know and they don't know. It's, uh, of course, a nice convenient assumption because it makes... It's what not the, convenient for the Chancellor no, at all. But it, it makes what the... Uh, it, it does indicate that the Chancellor's strategy not to pursue a demand-led policy is going to fail. So in that sense, it is helpful to him. It's not helpful to him in the sense that it makes, uh, uh, it, makes it likely that the economy will boost. The truth is, I think, is we don't know. And the question is, uh, what sort of gamble should we take? So the, the gamble problem he is I have taking is, of course, that this will... that the more conservative we are, the more we will cement in these very, very pessimistic expectations. But the truth is, we don't know. So the gamble he is taking is that the Bank of England can ride to the rescue the new remit monetary activism alongside fiscal conservatism and supply-side reforms. Monetary activism is going to do, do the job. What do you make of the, it, the remit changes? Well, yeah, but if you take the assumption that we really have this huge structural problem, 
I basically we are close to full employment, as it were, then uh, monetary activism is going to achieve nothing uh, except more inflation. And I, there are, of course, critics of the uh, Chancellor who would say exactly that. Within that context, if that's so you right, don't believe that, well, do you? if that's right, uh, then uh, the change in the remit will make no difference because the, the, the Bank of England will do more or less what it's doing now because otherwise the inflation will just explode. If it's wrong, if it's wrong, the question is, will the Bank of England will then observe inflation falling faster than it now believes? Will the Bank of England's actions really help? I think there's a huge question remaining about how effective monetary policy is in current conditions, particularly with, and I'm surprised he hasn't done more, to discuss and address the obvious weaknesses in the banking sector, which are becoming more obvious, which the Governor, Bank, uh, Sir Mervyn King, has stressed. Because uh, that's what might, if you really believe it's possible, make monetary policy effective. So there you have it. I don't think we've uh, resolved our disagreements. Martin clearly thinks this budget's going to do nothing for the economy, and the monetary activism isn't very interesting either. I think I would be slightly more positive than that, but I would certainly agree with Martin that the tax changes are rather insignificant in an economic sense. For more, you can read much more of this on FT.com.